their their questions, which uh, I'm sure can be very pointed at, at times, and I'm sure people will be able to share some of that with us. Um, so 0808 92 95 00 is the number to call. Uh, our personal finance expert, Fergus Muirhead, is here. Lots of chat about pensions, of course, mm. with uh, the Wall Street women and the triple lock, etc. But he's here to answer whatever questions you have about your money. And Lisa Snowden is here to tell us that she's just getting started in her 50s. I love to hear that. I read that earlier and I thought, fantastic. Can't well, you know, the lady that's just won the Barclay 100 is 40. Yes. Lots of ultra runners are in their 40s. She's thinking about it. Not in the slightest. No, me neither. I'm with you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Kate's here at 9 o'clock. Thanks very much. Now, it is 23 minutes past 8, means it's time for sport. Kenny Crawford's here. Thanks very much, Laura. And the football front attention is turning to Tuesday night when Scotland will host Northern Ireland at Hamden in another friendly for Steve Clark's side. The last one in Amsterdam on Friday night ended up being a frustrating exercise. They've given it away. Scotland are in. Shackley's in! Oh, he's hit the bar! He's hit the bar! He's got his head in his hands! What an opportunity! Lauren Shankland, one-on-one with the goalkeeper. All season, he's been dispatching those with aplomb. But not that time, Liam McLeod's commentary on sports around there. Yes, Shankland's missed one of several chances Scotland spurned after an impressive first hour against the Netherlands, who eventually won comfortably by four goals to nil. So it's six games without a win for the national side, but that's a sequence of results which has included matches against England, Spain and France. How they'd love to put that right on their own patch tomorrow, but Northern Ireland have been showing some encouraging signs of late. I'm pleased to say the Belfast Telegraph Chief sports writer Stephen Beacom joins us for a chat. He's already in Glasgow. Good morning, Stephen. Kenny, how are you? Great to be in your fantastic city. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm pleased you, you've had a good reception, Stephen, and you're enjoying yourself already. Hopefully tomorrow night you're not as chirpy, but we'll deal with that in a minute. <laughs> uh, you were in Bucharest to see Northern Ireland draw 1-1 against Romania on Friday. How did you feel Michael O'Neill's men uh, were in shape-wise? How did they look? It was really promising, Kenny, to be honest. Like last year, Northern Ireland had um, a bit of a shocker. They lost seven games in their Euro qualifying campaign. They ended it on a high, beating Denmark, and they followed that up in Bucharest with um, a really encouraging performance, a really encouraging result. And that's what Michael O'Neill is looking for. He wants to build momentum going into the World Cup qualifying campaign. So in Romania, it was um, a tough match because Romania are a decent side but they kept their shape they kept their discipline and they looked dangerous whenever they went forward on the counter attack so yeah definitely something to build on and hopefully they'll continue to do that at Hampton Park on Tuesday night yeah, when I saw that 1-1 scoreline come in, it was definitely an impressive one, Stephen, and we'll come back to you in just a second. But here's how Scotland and Aston Villa's John McGinn is feeling in light of the six-game winless run. Nothing will, will, will break what we've done as a team. Uh, we've got to get back Tuesday, uh, get back to winning ways, which, um, which we haven't been for a wee while now. But um, if we play like we did for the majority of the game, um, we'll, we'll, we will do that. So, Stephen, Scotland will see this as a good opportunity to end this winless run, but I imagine a young Northern Ireland side will want to make a statement as well. Yeah, they will. Scotland are going to be big favourites, aren't they? Listen, there's going to be a big crowd there, passionate crowd, um, cheering the, the Scots on. Northern Ireland's going to have 1,500 fans over, so um, there should be a cracking atmosphere. And um, what you will see on Tuesday night is a, a young Northern Ireland team who um, play without fear but we do know that Scotland are going to imagine dominate possession and it'll be up to Northern Ireland to soak all that up and hit them on the break. Northern Ireland have pace about them in the uh, players like Connor Bradley, Isaac Price, and they've got quality there too. But um, Scotland will fancy this. You know, they'll think this is a great opportunity to end their uh, poor run of results. And Northern Ireland, their aim will be to continue the momentum they've built over the last couple of games. Yeah, let's talk about a couple of the players in the Northern Ireland team, Stephen. Connor Bradley, you mentioned there, he's really burst onto the scene at Liverpool. 18 appearances for Jurgen Klopp's side this season. Definitely one to watch. 
Oh, this boy's pure class. I've got to tell you, he is an absolute joy to watch. 20 years of age, he made his Liverpool debut a few years ago. And I'll tell you this, Kenny, he's um, he's a remarkable young man as well. The last time a, a player from Northern Ireland actually played for Liverpool, get this, was in 1954. So connor has been breaking all sorts of records as a Northern Ireland player with Liverpool. And um, against um, the R Romanians, he was excellent, just driving for forward like he does in a red shirt and I can't wait to see his uh, matchup with Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson Connor's been telling me has been like a, a mentor to him at Liverpool he's been very very good to him so um, clearly not only is Andy Robertson a quality footballer he's a really good guy as well so um, yeah that's going to be fascinating to watch. That's probably going to be the matchup of the night for me but um, yeah keep an eye on Bradley. He, his name is going to resonate throughout football for years to come interesting interesting and Jamie Reid he scored the goal against Romania on Friday night not one that's so familiar to us in Scotland I don't think 21 goals for Stevenage in League 1 some people might see that as quite a low level but he's clearly got international quality Stephen yeah, yeah, this is a fantastic story. Jamie Reid played for the Northern Ireland under 21s over a decade ago. He then, um, his career went through um, a sort of a, a strange period, given the ability that he has. He was playing non league football not too long ago. He gets called into the senior squad for the first time, and within seven minutes, he scored a brilliant goal. So he was so proud, so delighted. He qualifies for Northern Ireland through his Belfast grandmother. So I'm certain his family were just born after the game in Romania and he'll want to kick on that's the one thing he did tell me after the match he said listen I just I want this to be the start and um, he is relishing the thought of playing at Hampton it's something he thought he would never do and here he is playing one of the most iconic stadiums on the planet and he'll be hoping to get another goal Kenny and um, the Green and White Army will be hoping that he certainly does that against um, your team on, on Tuesday <laughs> and just finally and very quickly Stephen just in 15 or 20 seconds Michael O'Neill the manager at uh, Northern Ireland currently well backed by Northern Irish football fans Oh yeah, listen, they love him. It's like um, having the Messiah return. He was the man that took Northern Ireland to Euro 2016 and the fans believe that he is the man that can take Northern Ireland back to a major championships. I think he can as well. OK, Stephen Beacom, really enjoyed ch chatting to you this morning. Could have chatted longer, but our time is up. He's the chief sports writer at the Belfast Telegraph uh, and he'll be in Hamden tomorrow night for Scotland's friendly against Northern Ireland. One other little bit of football news that I didn't mention earlier is that Bonnie Rig Rose have sacked Robbie Horn as manager of the League Two side at uh, Newdentas Park, uh, their second bottom of League Two. Uh, but Robbie Horn has been with them a long time, so that'll be a wrench for a lot of fans of that club. Kenny, thank you very much indeed. Coming up in the next 10 minutes, more on the UK government's plans to link cyber attacks to China. The time now, half past eight. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. For this morning's news and sport for the borders with Angela Suave. The number of energy storage units planned for fields in Berwickshire will top 500 when the third and latest application goes through the final local stage of planning today. The Scottish Government will decide whether to grant a licence to the third applicant, now going by the names of Eccles Energy Centre Limited. But Scottish Borders Council's planning committee will discuss a report and provide its guidance. Ministers have yet to deny any application. Chair of the Leitham, Eccles and Burgum Community Council Council Bob Hope says the local impact isn't being properly considered. The impact it has on the community is palpable. I'm meeting with people on a weekly basis living in the proximity of uh, either where these are being developed or are being proposed and the anxiety level is, is, is through the roof. Uh, I'm meeting people who are genuinely ill with physical conditions because they are so worried about this. Property values are being slashed. Futures are uh, becoming very uncertain if you're living anywhere close to these. And that's before you take the environmental side and uh, just the general impact of driving through a beautiful countryside. 
White Rugby Club are to part company with their championship winning coach at the end of the season. The contracts of head coach Matty Douglas and his forwards colleague Lewis Bertram won't be renewed as part of the review of coaching and player development, a decision the club call difficult and say they didn't take lightly. Hoyk have yet to play their Scottish Cup semi-final and their Premiership final both against Curry, with the Greens bidding for back-to-back titles. Lecturers at Borders College are set to take part in three days of industrial action over the next few weeks. EIS union members are to walk out on Tuesday the 16th and Monday the 22nd of April over what they claim is an overdue pay award, then again on Thursday the 2nd of May as part of a rollout programme of strikes across the country. Campaigners are again fighting to protect an ancient people's woodland. Two years ago, more than 500 locals successfully objected to plans to build flats on the King's Meadows estate, which would have seen 50 mature trees felled. Developers Grant and Holmes has now applied to the council to modify their previous outline planning permission, but their opponents are gathering support from local politicians. Dr Michael Marshall is one of the organisers. We've looked at the uh, maps from uh, the middle of the 1700s. We found that it just misses out being an ancient woodland by about 30 years. But effectively, it's full of uh, what happens to an ecosystem if you leave it for 200 years. And it's right on the tweeds, right on the tweed sack. And there's all sorts of uh, protected species, bats, otters, red squirrel, you name it, this site's got it. Come. We did ask Grant and Holmes for comment but haven't yet received a reply. Sport now starting with rugby. The Women's Six Nations has kicked off with Scotland recording a first victory over Wales in Cardiff in over 20 years. Borders trio Lisa Thompson, Lana Skeldon and Chloe Rawley all played their part in the 2018 win, a record seventh victory on the bounce. Meanwhile in men's rugby, the South started their inter-district campaign with a 27-24 win over Edinburgh. They did it the hard way playing into the they went in 24-6 down at half time, but three second half tries brought them back and three conversions and two penalties successfully kicked was enough to win Kirk Ford, man of the match. Said at half time when we were going in, that was easy, a 20 point win we thought like, so we, t- we never really played how we wanted first half, we never really managed the game, especially into the win, so aye, we just thought, try and pin them second half, play a bit more rugby. Aye, luckily we were on the, the right, right end of the scoreboard at the end, okay, we thought it was easy, a 20 point win when we were in at half time, so... Uh, we knew the conditions were going to be like this, so thankfully we just done enough in the first and second half and we, we just got over the line. We were saying up before the game and that this is the kind of culmination of the season for a lot of boys, so brilliant to have it back after after a few years of not having it and especially having a full full championship again, so everybody's excited to, to keep going in the next couple of weeks. Elsewhere, there were two Border League games on Friday night. Melrose beat Kelso 34-12 and Jed Forrest got their first win of the season, turning over Peebles 25-15. In football's Lowland League, Berwick Rangers went down 2-0 at home to Caledonian Braves. In the East Leagues, Vale of Leithen lost 6-2 to Arniston Rangers. Peebles Rovers um, beat Kennaway Star Hearts 4-1. Tweedmouth Rangers lost 2-0 at Thornton Hibbs. Linton Hotspur went down 3-2 at Hart Hill Royal. And Hoyt Royal Albert are through to the second round of the League Cup where they'll play Whitburn. They beat Livingston United 3-2 on Saturday. In racing, Hoyt jockey Rowan Scott rode his first win, third winner, sorry, in three days with a 10-1 win on the King of Spain at Doncaster yesterday. He began the new flat season in style with a sprint victory at Newcastle on Saturday on Be Here Now, having posted a 14-1 win on Patronage and the mile on Friday. And Hoyt jockey Lucy Brown rode her own fugitives drift to an 8-1 win in the conditions race at Saturday's Overton point to point. Gala Shields trainer Mike Cregan saddled Eagles Rock to win the restricted for owner Vicky Russell and Windrum jockey Nick Orpwood rode incisive to take the maiden race. The Borders weather, Callum McCall. An unsettled and increasingly wet day with low pressure to our southwest, pushing a front in across the area with outbreaks of rain developing this morning and lingering into the afternoon. There will be a cold feel as an easterly breeze picks up highs of 5 to 7 degrees Celsius. Remaining blustery, chilly and wet tonight with further rain at times, later easing off lows of 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. Remaining mostly overcast tomorrow with easterly winds, any early patchy rain will fizzle out for a time before returning again later. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders.
BBC Radio Scotland. It's 8.36 now. You're listening to Good Morning Scotland with Laura and Lucy. We're here with you for the next 20 minutes or so till 9 o'clock and then Kay takes over. And the UK government is expected to link cyber attacks on the country's elections watchdog to China. The attacks on the Electoral Commission, which reportedly saw personal details of millions of voters accessed, happened in August 2021, but were only revealed last year. Several MPs and peers, including the SNP MP Stuart MacDonald, who have been critical of Beijing, are thought to have also been targeted in the cyber attacks. Let's speak to our political editor now, Chris Mason. Morning, Chris. Hi, morning. Morning. So just remind us of all the background to this then. Well, the crux of this is how does the UK approach China? You know, for much of the last 10 or 15 years when David Cameron was Prime Minister, there was a real warming up of the relationship between the UK and Beijing. It was felt then that the way to influence China, as well as having a decent economic relationship with it, was to do just that, to have that relationship in the hope that that would have diplomatic knock-ons. Now, the posture is much, much more sceptical. And what we'll get this afternoon from Oliver Dowden, the Deputy Prime Minister, is confirmation that that attack on the Electoral Commission, the elections watchdog, that holds 40 million people's details, people who are on the electoral roll around the UK, uh, was hacked and was hacked by China. Now, that happened back in 2021. It was identified